Hi there, this is Hans Forschner with NAVCON Engineering. This is a short video on uh, importing DXF files into the GeoDatabase. The GeoDatabase is the uh, program within the SoundPlan software that creates uh, situations and uh, you, uh, the user is able to develop different scenarios with different layers of information and uh, of course one of the big uh, questions is uh, we have data in AutoCAD or other formats of um, like shapefiles. Uh, this recording is uh, specifically for importing DXF data. DXF stands for Data Exchange Format. It's a AutoCAD uh, um, format and um, so from here where we are I, I already preset some layers that I want to import uh, buildings, calculation areas, topo information, barriers, roads so I'll start with uh, topo information and I go to file import DXF and we have different files here available and the one I select is base model new and open it up the program will automatically uh, show all the layers that uh, are available and to get started I want to just uh, import elevation points and then elevation lines uh, those are basically to define the topography of the uh, this project area so we'll start with the points we'll import them and then also I'll uh, at the same time import the elevation lines now both of the data I will import into a ge existing geofile right here and here we can select which geofile we want to uh, put the data in. If the geofile is not existing and you want to just kind of pre-sort the information as you import uh, you can also click on this icon with this little uh, yellow little folder and then you can uh, add additional layers and then basically add new names for the layers of information you want to import. So right now we'll import it right here I click OK this data is already um, is is metric, so uh, the base unit is one meter, or meter, and uh, so here we imported the data, spot elevations and elevation lines. At this point, the program does not know that those lines are elevation lines. Uh, these could be roads, could be barriers, could be anything. Um, the spot heights could be also a point source. So we still need to tell the program what these uh, objects that we just imported what they are. So one way to select them is kind of to uh, go to the view option and go by current object type. So we uh, basically uh, change the view so we only see the object type that we want to look at. So I'll select uh, points and let me highlight them a little bit. And I'll select them all. You can select them by control A or uh, select all objects right here. And we go edit and convert object types or control U and then we change those to spot heights okay so now we have spot heights the same with eleva the elevation lines they are currently general lines so we can select them again and this time I use the shortcut control A and we can also do a shortcut here with the mouse a right click and convert object types and we change it to elevation lines click OK and I change back to showing all objects and we can look at the data in the front elevation view so this is a projection from the south to north and the same thing uh, side elevation that's from east uh, west to east and a 3D wireframe here we can rotate the whole thing and you can kind of get an idea of the geometry here so at this point uh, what I want to do is I want to triangulize that so we have a little bit more plastic information um, so I'll go uh, site map view and on the fundamentals we can calculate the, the digital ground model and we go with all the defaults uh, we call it DGM digital ground model and it uses the uh, geofile that is currently active and I just started to run it and so now here we have on the view we can look at all the triangles so here's all the data triangulized 
There are probably some areas we would uh, want to add additional information because these triangles are pretty large and it's interpolating of course always with the smallest triangles so if we add a little bit more information in these areas we can of course improve the ground model. We can also look at the whole thing and now in the 3D wireframe so or in the 3D view this uh, or 3D map that requires the 3D graphic module and uh, we have a pretty good idea of the ground model. All right. So next step is we import uh, the buildings. So I'll, let me go back to all objects. I'll turn off the triangles and we go file. So we'll go import DXF and we go and import the buildings. So here we have industrial buildings, we have main buildings. So these are all the buildings that get imported here. And we select the file, go to buildings, OK. And here are the buildings. Now the buildings, they are imported again as general lines. So we can go view, uh, current object type, and we select, actually they were imported as areas. And here we can uh, again convert them. So we select them all and convert them into buildings. Okay. Here we can uh, set the default height. Uh, so here we have 6 meters, reflection loss 1 dB. Some of the other parameters are more for advanced uh, usages. So right now we'll just go with the defaults. Click OK and here we have all the buildings. Now all the buildings are set with uh, 6 meter height so the next step would be to change that. So I know these buildings right here and this buildings are all warehouses uh, with a height of 10 meters. So I can select them all by uh, holding down the control button and dragging my right mouse over the, these points and then over these points and we go attribute explorer under edit functions and we change it all to 10 meters and we can apply that for all of these buildings. Click OK and again we uh, look at all objects and look at the 3D view. So uh, the model is starting to uh, be more plastic. All right. Next step would be uh, the road input we can save this for, for right now. I'll give it the base model. That's the name of the uh, situation. And this will be with road input and uh, buildings and elevation data from the XF file. So this is uh, sort of the documentation of this situation. All right. We can uh, select our road and I'll select import DXF and in this case we'll import the road data and we have road. Now here at this point I want to just kind of show a few more things on the objects. There are different uh, selections so right now everything is selected except the transformation so all the points will import line, polyline, circles. For circles, you can uh, define how uh, fine or what high resolution it uh, adds points to uh, to make a circle. So it's a polyline out of a lot of points. Or then we have text attributes here. Uh, maybe one thing: uh, if uh, elevation spots are not defined as spots, but in terms of a text in the AutoCAD drawing, you can import this text and uh, select here that you want to import them as spot heights. So it will basically put in the center of the text, it would uh, define a spot height with whatever text height that you have in there. And then the last thing is transformation. The transformation is a, a way to define transformation matrices. Uh, so if the data is millimeters, we would have to convert from millimeters to meters or centimeters from centimeters to meters. If it's inches, then uh, we have from inches to meters or foot to meters. For conversion of, uh, for example, feet to meters, we would uh, basically set up our first point. Uh, typically, I just use 100, uh, 0, 0, 0. And the second, I'll use uh, maybe uh, 100 and 0. That's for the DXFX and DXFY. And 100 feet is equivalent to 30.48 meters. And then with that, you basically have 
uh, two vectors and uh, you're defining the two-dimensional um, kind of conversion transformation matrix. Now this uh, transformation matrix is only in X and Y so if you have inches of feet uh, information in the uh, DXF file you still will need to convert the, the, X, uh, the Z coordinate by multiplying all the Z elevations by whatever co conversion factor 0 0.3048 for feet into meters or multiplied by 0.254 from uh, inches to meters. So let me turn this off again and uh, we'll go back and then we start the import. So here we have a couple of lines here. So these lines are the, uh, the roads. So we can uh, take the roads and so I'll just ex uh, use this example, this one road here and uh, again we convert that object types to a road. Click OK. And here we have our road input. So road uh, northbound and uh, we put in the uh, emission values. So here how many vehicles, so 1500 vehicles and then we can say 5% maybe and evening hours 1000 vehicles and nighttime maybe 500 vehicles and then also we'll keep the same ratios of percentages for medium trucks, heavy trucks and maybe 2% uh, for buses. Um, we can change the speed. The speed in this area is 60, mi uh, 60 kilometers so that's about uh, actually let's make it 64 that's about 40 miles an hour and we are all set with all the settings. Oh, actually we need to set the profile. This defines uh, the width of the lane, so we'll define that uh, 8 meters. Eight meters and we click OK. So we'll save this and uh, so with this we're almost uh, through this here. Uh, so we can import other objects like barriers, uh, berms and so forth. Uh, so any kind of point line or area information can be imported. Again in the DXF uh, import you always will have to convert the object later into whatever object it's uh, representing in sound plan. And, um, yeah, so that concludes the DXF import. If you've got any questions, uh, shoot me an email. Thank you.